everything isn't exactly what it appears to be. Erno may look lazy, unconscious and completely disconnected from the world around him, but all who know him better knows that that's not true. Sure, Erno doesn't rush things and is pretty easy going, but he still has quite a lot of hobbies. And as you might already know, this episode is about them. All of you who already know about Erno's tendency to crawl into a bottle might argue that drinking is the most important hobby he has. It's true that he spends a lot of time getting drunk, but that's also the reason why he considers it to be a lifestyle rather than a hobby. Because of this dance, drinking is not covered in this episode and instead we take a look at other things that Erna does while being more or less wasted. Let's deal first with the accusation of him being completely down for the count. It's needless to say that Erno knows how to relax. Even though he might throw up some bitter comments about life sometimes, he almost never stresses about anything, especially not about his own life. Taking life easy is natural for him, and he likes to do it outdoors as often as possible. Where there's a beach nearby, he likes to sunbath, despite the fact that he's unable to get a tan because of his physiology. It's also a great chance to keep his eyes open for aesthetic pleasure offered by handsome men. And as you can see, relaxing outdoors doesn't require warm weather. It can be nice during a cold winter. Ice fishing on the frozen lakes of Finland could be just as fun! Sometimes, but not very often, Erno tries something new. Geocaching is one of those hobbies, even though he only does it due to a misunderstanding. I'll get on that later, first I tell you about geocaching itself. Geocaching is an outdoor activity of searching for catches that people have put in places all over the world. The catcher is usually a waterproof container, having at least a logbook to log your visit. Many catches also have objects of little value and sometimes travel bugs. Travel bugs are items that are supposed to travel from catcher to catcher, and usually the owner of a travel bug wants them to travel as much as possible. The same applies for Erno, as he's registered as a travel bug in geocaching.com. No, his fat ass doesn't fit in almost any catcher that exists. Instead, he symbolically visits inside of each catcher as he checks out if there is an even small bottle of booze inside it. However, according to commonly recognized rules of geocaching, it's forbidden to put any food or drink into a catcher. I haven't told this to Erno as it will ruin his enthusiasm to search catches and therefore completely destroy his hobby. Here we are in Porto, Portugal, searching for a catcher. It was pretty difficult to find as we didn't have a GPS device of any kind. I had to use a cyber cafe to see the catcher's location as precisely as possible. Most of the geocatchers have a GPS device, but Erno can't afford one because he's always broke. But that won't prevent him from trying to find catches, especially not when we're traveling in new places. From 2001 Raha Festival, Danny and the Icelanders. Pääsylippu. It's on Finnish marks. Still, it wasn't 40 euros, it was Finnish 40 marks, which is, well, too much for this shit shit anyway, but I think I'm going to put this here. If you want to check which catcher Erno has visited lately, you can find the info on geocaching.com. To get detailed information, you have to register and sign into the site. It's free and quick, and if you want, you can also start to search for catches yourself or create catches around your own neighborhood. I don't count partying as a hobby, but Erno does it a lot. It naturally leaves quite a mess wherever it was arranged. Unfortunately, cleaning up isn't Erno's hobby at all. 
He does love his dear vacuum cleaner and once even took it to a rock festival, but he still can't use it enough to clean up a bit. The closest thing to cleaning he's ever done was a bit gross sexual encounter with his German friends. They came to visit us in Spain in the beginning of 2007 and while making an art performance, they used my USB vacuum cleaner as a sex toy. No, I never use it again since that. My tiny vacuum cleaner was made permanently dirty. How ironic, isn't it? If you want to watch the performance of these two Germans and Erno, you'll find it from the extra section of the homepage of Disgusting. Please have some discretion as Art Needs No Translation contains some mild erotic gay imagery. Still, it shouldn't be too bad if you can handle moustache, green stockings on a guy and some comic sons. All you who still think that he's always comatose and never responds to anything, you just don't know the difference between taking life easy and lying around like a corpse. And even if he looks a bit bored when you meet him for the first time, it's probably because you made him as bored as hell and he's escaping the frustrating situation by thinking about the next time he can have a drink with better company. And with better company. Sometimes he likes to do pranks. Because Erno is virtually immortal, he's often been involved with jokes where his skills get put to good use. He can hang around on a noose as long as he wants without harm. He also can hold his breath for unbelievable long periods, which is pretty handy when he gets a bath in the washing machine. Even so, he greatly dislikes the procedure and he has to be very very drunk to get him into one. It requires a lot of work. And that's why he's often left unclean, even though his plummy butt gets easily dirty. Even though this is the only way I know to wash Erno, I don't recommend doing this to any other animals or pets. For them I suggest using some less violent way. In Erno's case it should be okay, as he's unconscious due to heavy drinking. Even if he wakes up inside a washing machine, the anesthetic effect of alcohol should be enough to prevent him feeling pain. Well, at least that's my guess.